Hi everyone, it's Catherine. This is the uh, tutorial I promised to do the vellum with the alcohol ink. I'm just showing a couple of the tools that uh, I'll be using. The vellum comes, it's 55 pound, it comes in these sheets. I've cut them into six inch by four and a half inch. And there's also Yupo available if you want to use it. I've been using the um, both of them, but for the flower pictures that uh, the abstracts that this is a tutorial for, they were both uh, the ones that you've seen uh, done on on vellum. So that's what I'm doing here. And today I decided, hey, a lazy Susan would make so much sense. I didn't use one for the other two, but I'm using one here, and I probably will from now on for this particular technique and likely some of the other alcohol ink techniques. You wouldn't know it, but I've got uh, a fan going in the background. Not just a regular fan fan, but I'm in a kitchen in the basement of my home. That's where my studio is. So the fan over the stove is going and it's keeping the air circulated quite well. But I do my best to keep, uh, you'll see me start to use a um, craft dryer here in a moment. And I do my best to keep out of the way of the fumes. So I don't like um, aiming it back at myself and having the fumes come all over me. I held up a bottle there, a squeeze bottle. Um, you can use any kind that's got control. Um, and it's got a little bit of um, mermaid ink in it and probably a little bit of silver uh, metallic, um, which is, this is all optional, but I just have this mixed with isopropyl alcohol, which you see in the background. And now you're gonna see me taking some actual ink inks, uh, not a mixture of, of ink and alcohol, but just straight out of the little bottle. I'm dropping in some of the, uh, I have to look and see what that bottle is when I put it back. Uh, so that is the uh, uh, coral. And what I'm doing there is taking the craft dryer to, just to sort of keep those those dots in place for now. They're gonna move around later, but I, in general, I want those colors, those pigments to be sort of down in those areas. I'm kind of laying out a visual for myself, but yeah, these things don't always turn out the way you visualize them. Um, I think I'm plucking off another uh, red, and I apologize. I believe that's watermelon. And yeah, just laying in a little bit of color. Again, I'll go back with craft dryer, do a little bit of setting so that the, the color, and you can see some of the mix a bit, that's fine. And these would essentially be, quote unquote, the flowers, um, or at least the color that represents the flowers or the petals or, or what have you. And you'll see they'll, they'll change, but uh, what I'm going to lay in here is a little bit of uh, yellow. This is probably dandelion. Yes, it is. Uh, and this is from the Adirondack, on Adirondack line, or I'll call it Tim Holtz for short. And what I'm doing there is, I'm overlapping it a little bit too, and I held it up a bit so you could see sort of what it does. As you see, if you're not familiar with alcohol ink, it wants to make a circle, or roughly a circle. Uh, and the cleaner, less, uh, cleaner your surface is, um, like less fingerprints, that kind of thing, you don't want to get finger marks all over it, the better it is in terms of its willingness to go into a, a circle. You'll see that happen even when you uh, lay one color on top of another, it, the color that you've placed on top starts pushing the one below it out. And what will also happen is that in the process of drying, these tend to, these inks tend to leave a bit of a crust on the edge. And that's a very useful thing because really it's just a buildup of pigment. And you'll see me drop again a little bit more green in. So I'm kind of mixing the greens with the yellows, though I do allow a little bit of overlap over the red. I mean, allow, but you know, it's my, just the way I do it, how I feel at the time. I try and really make this kind of a mindless exercise. I'm trying not to think too hard about where things go. And of course, you want a general idea of placement, but this is a semi-controlled technique. So uh, the controlled being where you put the color, as we're dropping it in here. And the less controlled is what I'm doing here. And that again is an isopropyl alcohol. I've put in a little bit of, in this case, I put in uh, mermaid because what I like is in these types of pictures, it, it's so light as you can see, uh, but it'll leave, it, leave a really light, light wash of mermaid in the background. And because there's so much green, um, it sort of just blends. It doesn't come out as, as bright turquoise. You could make that wash of alcohol uh, plus ink, whatever, whatever combination you want. I have also put a little bit of uh, 
metallic silver in there from another project and I decided not to dump it out and waste any. I just added more isopropyl alcohol, which you see in the back, again, uh, with the red label. It can be bought at any drugstore. should be 91% or more. Uh, I would not buy a lesser uh, percentage because there's more water in it and uh, alcohol ink needs alcohol uh, to make it work like this. So you see I'm taking the craft dryer. Now what I'm doing is I'm getting those mixes going because the alcohol that I've poured on is um, activating the alcohol pigment that was sitting on the, uh, on the uh, I keep wanting to say UPO, but on the uh, vellum. So it's loosening it up, it's mixing the colors a bit, it's moving those crusts, which become um, shadows, uh, the dark parts. And so again, this is also a bit of an exercise in light and shadow. For anyone who's taken basic art courses, you get into that right at the very beginning. And for all of us, I think naturally as humans, we get to recognize that there's light and shadow on everything. It kind of changes colors and makes them look a bit different. So I'm trying to think about that a little bit, but I'm not really working too hard um, at processing. I'm, I'm just really trying to sort of lay things out. It's an abstract. So uh, if you're looking at how to paint with alcohol ink and make it look like something in particular, that's a little bit different process. It's a little bit more um, controlled. I've also done it both on UPO and on vellum. Um, and the reason vellum's a little bit easier to control things is because it's not as, um, it's more porous than UPO. UPO is absolutely non-porous, almost like glass. Uh, where vellum has a little bit of porousness to it, so it grabs the ink and doesn't allow the ink to go as far um, as it otherwise would. My pouring this uh, alcohol ink solution on it is what is allowing it to flow a bit more and kind of move around. And I suppose I also could use, you'll see in the background there, there's a blending solution, uh, just in, sort of in the front to the right of the alcohol bottle and that I use in some applications as well. I'm not using it here just like I'm not using every single ink that I've got sitting there. I'm using mostly the ones that you see sort of in your immediate right and I think there's an orange that's um, been added in. I'm just, sorry I apologize I'm really not good about keeping track of things like that all those details and I should improve over time as I do videos. So again, what I'm doing is just pouring over areas that um, typically I'm looking for areas that are a little bit darker or a little bit more um, finite, definite looking than what I want. I want to soften them up a bit. I want the colors to kind of move a bit. And in a couple of minutes, as we sort of progress through the, the image and, it's, and it starts to unfold kind of in, in my view anyway of what the images are, and there I'm just spinning it around, which is also a nice way, by the way, of getting folds and folds and folds of petals. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I tend to go off on, on one tangent and another as I'm doing a, a live view of these things. But what's really happening as that ink is drying right at the moment is that it's, it's folding over top of itself. And it's creating what looks like a whole bunch of different shadows, which is very, uh, yeah, reminiscent of petals. Doesn't look like a whole lot there. Kind of hard to catch on camera. And you're going to see all that in a moment I'm going to pick up a straw, which is sitting on the left. Uh, I think I, I'm sort of deciding it needs to have a little bit more brightness to it. And so I'll catch which yellow that was that was dropped in because I have a couple of them now. And again, I'm holding that spot, as it were. That's the controlled part. And I'll put a, just a couple of drops, not even a drop, because I don't want a whole lot. I don't want it to move too far. But you can see it's what's happening is that the alcohol solution is breaking up that little crust that formed naturally around the circle of yellow. And it's melding it, sort of moving it into the surrounding area. So as you're using the uh, craft dryer, not a problem if you're uh, just using tiny bits of alcohol solution. Uh, otherwise, as you could see in some of the earlier frames, it was moving things quite far. So the color there that I'm using is Dandelion, and that's a Tim Holtz ink, or Adirondack Ranger. 
and I'm just sort of showing, allowing it to spread. That's another thing about doing this is that sometimes it's kind of makes sense to kind of let things happen uh, before you decide to prompt them along. And so what I did there was just sort of wanted to see how far that circle would go. And I did pick up a straw and uh, the circle was almost dry when I picked up the straw, so that's why I kind of put it down quickly. It wasn't going to make much difference. And I've put down again some of the alcohol um, ink solution, the wash, we can call it. And I'm drying that up. And the beauty of alcohol ink, as I've said before, if you're not familiar, is it just dries exceptionally quickly. The downside is that there's fumes coming off all the time, not just from the ink, but also from the alcohol solution. So you should be taking a lot of precautions. We have a bird in our house. Very, very dangerous uh, for birds can be deadly um, if it's the wrong fumes. And so um, to say nothing of the human beings, including myself, who's sitting right there. So you need to be extremely careful when you're doing this. If you're at all uh, unsure, then I suggest that you go online and get some information about working with alcohol inks. If you've got allergies, um, bronchial issues, issues, that kind of thing, it can also be very hard on you. So uh, using a Lazy Susan as I'm doing in this uh, tutorial, I would highly recommend because it does allow you to somewhat uh, control the direction that you're facing that um, the air that you're pushing the alcohol vapor uh, away with and you want that to be going away from you not towards you. So I'm now taking a bit more green and that one I believe is citrus Adirondack because it's a little bit more of a leafy color and while there's suggestions of green in the uh, image that I'm working on, I, I just, my eye wanted a little bit more, not balanced so much, but just a bit more kind of uh, randomness. Um, I don't like things personally. This is only my, again, this is of course entirely up to you as you're doing it, but for me, um, I like to have kind of randomness, uh, just like nature is. And because this is an abstract and it's only meant to suggest uh, what's there, I have a lot of liberty. So if your preference is to do it a bit more exacting, absolutely do that. Uh, there's also ways that you can add details to these images. If you are one that really prefers to have um, the images made clear or you know that it's going to be uh, mounted in some way for a card or as a picture or whatever, for somebody who prefers things to look um, uh, very specific, uh, then you can certainly take um, some kind of an alcohol ink pen. I usually use a really fine Sharpie, like an ultra fine black Sharpie. And uh, if I'm going to do it on, on any of my alcohol ink work, and I just go over and um, outline or doodle or um, enhance. Um, I've even got some pieces that I haven't posted, but there are pieces where I've done uh, this kind of a process, uh, but it comes out looking like a whole bunch of faces. And so I sort of work on enhancing the faces without taking away too much from, from how the inks have just gone on, on themselves and, and been blown around like this. So again, you can see I'm mixing yellows and greens and just kind of um, and it's with a straw because I want a little bit more control over where it's going. I don't want it just sort of whooshing across into the reds because at this stage it is a little bit more about mm, I want it to be visually appealing. And so um, the, the beauty of it is that you can place those colors where you want them to be. And I think here I'm sort of trying to figure out if I really want to add more wash, but no, I need a little bit more to my eye. A little bit more of the green and I'm going to use the straw again because once more I want it to, to be there and I want it to show and I but I want it controlled in terms of how much it mixes with other colors that kind of thing. So I've decided just another touch next to it and I'm going to take the straw and just kind of move it. You see little fingers come out on some of these um, uh, in this technique and and that's from from usually from blowing the ink in such a way that it just sort of leaves off little tendrils that can be quite beautiful especially in pictures with flowers because it sort of tends to look like stems and uh, parts of leaves and things like that so that's kind of nice and 
in amidst all of the circles or uh, you know, petally kind of looking things. I wasn't trying to make things that looked like leaves. Again, it's more about a representation. And because I've got that alcohol solution, if I find that something there, just to give you an idea how it looks. If I find something looks a little bit too harsh for my eye, then I just add solution and continue with the craft dryer. So I'm adding a little bit more of that alcohol solution. Um, and again, moving around a little bit of that uh, the pigment where it's crusted up, I take my straw, and this is because I, I really want more control at this point in time. Uh, it, that, that's what the straw gives me because I'm blowing at it ever so gently, and I'm moving around that Lazy Susan and, and having the, uh, the color and the pigment go where I want it to or not. Um, if I don't really want it to cross over into another color, I want a little bit more definition, I can do that. And here I'm sort of blowing the ink back on itself um, before it dries if I can so that I get that impression of shadows and folds and light, which I really enjoy. And so I'm going to do that a couple more times. It's a good idea to sort of stand up or sit back, um, whatever it takes, and look at it. Um, Sometimes it's easier just to do it when you're sitting and staring at it. I find sometimes it's also a good idea to get up and, and kind of walk away and come back. Um, and that tells me a little bit about when I should stop and when I should add more or do more. Um, and sometimes I regret those decisions, but you know, most of the time it, it turns out to be quite wonderful. So I, I don't look at anything really as a mistake, um, but... Uh, and that maybe that'll be my next video because I, I did have some trials and tribulations doing this one. And that's it. That is it for the tutorial. Thank you.